Alright everyone, welcome to uh, a year in the TikTok of Fat Sapphic Bro. I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of fun with this one. Uh, the pet tax for today is my sister's cat, Binks. You'll notice his fur is kind of weird. We do not know what has caused this. He's an older kitty that was a stray for a long time that we just fed. Uh, we had believed, because in the beginning he looked really good, and we believed that he had another family, and that like he had like an actual family that owned him, and um, would just hang out at our house because we had some cat stuff for the other strays in the neighborhood. After a while, though, it seemed like no one was taking care of him anymore. It seemed like he had gotten into some fights with other cats. And so when we moved to our current place of residence, we decided to bring him along since he wasn't looking good. And we started taking care of him. He has almost no teeth, unfortunately. Poor thing. He's a little bit of a needy boy. Uh, he's very thin. We have trouble getting him to gain weight because he needs it. But he's a very kind kitty. He's a good kitty. But anyway, let's go ahead and start with our year in the TikTok. We are starting on November 1st of 2021. This person says, I have sympathy for people like this. I don't want their bullshit around me, but I feel bad for them self-harming to accommodate fatphobic society. For context, this was a comment where we were talking about former fat people and how fat phobic they can be and i totally agree with this comment and i asked if it was okay to uh to comment response or video response and they said that it was um this is just something that it's so difficult because i genuinely feel so horribly for the fat people on this app who like to come at me and attack me and troll me and especially the former fat people who are like well i did it da, 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 da. when you know at the end of the day it's like no they're mad because i refuse to hate myself into better health and i especially refuse to hate myself into a lie about better health and i think that they get so pissed off because they have killed themselves to look like a specific ideal and they still hate themselves and they still have all of the same problems they've always had because that sounds an awful like a lot like projection most of the former fat people don't kill themselves to be thin they just make better food choices and they exercise some and for you to say that they hate themselves it i to me that sounds like protection my friend because i don't even assume that you hate yourself i think that you're probably fairly sad in your life but and just i take that because you seem to find like oppression at every turn you think it seems like you think the majority of your interactions with people um, turn you into a victim in some way. And so to me, that seems like a very sad mindset. But I don't necessarily think that you hate yourself. So for you to say that they hate themselves, that that seems... With, with no like real citation of where you get that from, like what about them... What about in the way that they talk to you that makes you think that they hate themselves? I'm just curious. They, the reason why the former fat people talk out against you guys is because they recognize the bullshit that you spew because they they got out of that mindset they recognize that mindset but go off i guess as surprise fat wasn't your fucking problem but like i feel so genuinely heartbroken for these folks because i remember what it is like to be in that brainwashed no, you fucking don't. And calling them brainwashed. Really. That's the pot calling the kettle black, my friend. Mindset and that diet mindset of like just constantly all you think about is how you will have this better life once you're finally thin. And it's just so toxic and it's such a lie. And I genuinely feel so bad for these people, but at the same time, I refuse to be like made miserable because they're miserable and couldn't make themselves feel better even though they went to every extreme possible to feel better about themselves and it's like i get so fed up with the fact that basically i'm trolled all day by people who are so fucking insecure that they're 
hoping they can bully me into being as insecure as they are. Like, it's not going to happen. And it's just, it's sad, and I feel so bad for them, but at the same time, I'm so pissed because I'm like, grow the fuck up and get a goddamn life. Like, we're adults. I'm 35 years old. Like, shut up. You say grow up and get a life, and yet, what life do you have, my friend? What life do you have? Because from what I've seen, you post a lot on TikTok and you consistently are monitoring for all of the different TikToks that you have, you are consistently monitoring your comment section. That takes a lot of time and effort. That takes a lot of effort on your part. And most people don't have time for that because they have lives. They have things going on in their life. So you want to talk about grow up and, and get a fucking life. How about you stop viewing everything as a form of oppression against you? How about you stop turning yourself into a victim at every turn? How about you stop crying about people not treating you the way you want to be treated? How about you stop crying about people not doing exactly what you want? You're the one that needs to get a life, my friend. And it's not like I don't, you know, like I study this shit. It's, I, I sit here. You study? You study this shit? Really? And cite articles on this godforsaken app every day and folks... Ugh. I would really like to know where the citation of these articles are because I haven't seen them. It's just so frustrating. It's just so frustrating. And it, I just wish that former fat folks would just shut the fuck up. Like, I'm not bothering you, so why the hell are you bothering me? Like, stay out of my space. I don't need to hear your two cents about how you think that weight loss is okay. I don't care. Move along. And it's a public platform. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. Anyway, thanks for letting me rant. So, uh, just the last little note on that last video. This isn't your space. This is a social media platform where you regularly spew misinformation. That you advocate for people doing certain things based on potential disabilities or health issues that they have when you are not a doctor. And that's where people start to get pissed off. You also say that you have no control over your weight, which is an absolute falsehood. And that will also piss people off. You're on a public platform spewing your opinions and misinformation, which opens you up to dissenters and detractors. If you don't like it, private your, your page. This person says what's worse is that stores that advertise as plus-size clothing will still have far too much for those that can fit into what most stores stock. Yes. A big freaking culprit of this shit is Torrid. They have so many multiple items of the same fucking couple of smallish sizes and zero garments in the higher sizes. It is fucking impossible at Torrid to ever... All stores, Torrid included, will stock what sells the most. In this case, probably what stocks and sells the most, because I think the lowest size that Tord goes to is a size 14, isn't it? So they're uh, stocking 14, 16, 18, 20. It's because those are the most popular sizes. People in the higher sizes, kind of like Amber Lynn, will most likely order their stuff online. It's about what sells, my friend. This is capitalism. It's about supply and demand fucking find any of their larger sizes in the goddamn store and it is literally a store for fat people and like across the board i've heard from like multiple like fat groups that i'm in like everybody experiences this at torrid and i do not understand why you are catering to a fucking specific population and not stocking those sizes in the store it literally I don't understand how capitalism is so shitty at doing its job. Like, I literally, I'm like, I'm gonna- I love that Fat Savic Bro here assumes that something's going wrong with the system, not that their perception could be off. No. Tord's just doing capitalism wrong. It couldn't possibly be that they have a larger sense of- it couldn't, it couldn't possibly be that their perception of how many, like, really large fat people there are could be off. No. 
it's that Torrid is doing capitalism wrong. Just, it baffles me. All right. FYI, you guys have experienced nothing different, but I ended up having to take about a half hour break, some holiday planning and stuff that uh, I was needed for. So now we're going to just continue listening to this. Anti-capitalist, but it's like, it's so bizarre that there's like this ridiculously, pun intended, a huge group of people that you could be catering your goddamn fucking shit too that would throw money at you for there's not enough though to justify catering to those over the smaller sizes because there's more people in the smaller sizes you say it's a huge number to you it's probably a huge number but for companies that deal with millions of customers it may not be that big well-made clothing in big sizes that we can try on in a goddamn store it's so frustrating so frustrating and this is a thing that I've noticed with Fat Sapphic Bros, that they believe they have this kind of objective view of the situation, objective reality, when they sit in their apartment on the internet all the time and just see stuff in their own echo chamber. Well, then your perception is going to be skewed. <laughs> Simple, just start working out, get a new haircut, shave, change your style. Changing yourself to please others is never the way. Who said it was to please others? I'm saying that's what I would do. Not to please others because I don't give a shit. Lol. And then the, the little caption thing here says, Yes, you're a she. I'm not a part of the LGBT community, so... I wasn't complaining that phobic isn't a thing. So here's the thing. Yes, being yourself is what's going to lead to a long-term relationship. However, putting your best foot forward, this kind of feels very incel Because I, I frequented a lot of incel forums where they're like, take a shower, eat right, make sure your clothes are clean, like basic hygiene sort of things. And these... The intels will just like, outright ignore and say, no, I could live the exact same way. And if I looked like Chad with a gigacock, then I would, I would have uh, foids all over me. And this kind of feels along the, similar, the same line. You want, it's also captioned because this is a, um, a stitch where it's, you know, gay dating in 2021 and... This guy was kind of going over some of the different stuff that they experience, like people only wanting casual sex and people telling him that he's too fat and that sort of thing. And it's like, if you want to attract more possible partners, then you kind of have to bring up your appearance. It's, it's what people are going to be first attracted to you for. You can be yourself but be the best version of yourself when you are going into the dating sphere or lower your standards. I guarantee that there's probably someone who's either a little bit bigger or maybe is not as conventionally attractive that would love to date you and you won't give them the time of day because you're looking at the like uber attractive people that put a lot of effort into their appearance. So I don't, I don't know. It just is kind of like maybe try some of the dating apps. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. This is a little outside my realm, but if it's one thing that I've kind of learned watching some of the, like, dating advice and stuff that I see, it's that you have to bring up your physical appearance to get more options. I don't date, so this is a little outside my wheelhouse, but that's from watching family members and stuff, like, that's around my age. Like, that's what I've seen, is that you put in... The most into your appearance to attract the most options while remaining personality wise uniquely yourself um but even then sometimes you have to learn to soften the edges of your part because we all have edges that we need softened i can be very impatient and that's something that i need to learn is being impatient part of being me yes but that doesn't mean that i shouldn't 
work on adjusting that behavior because it is social it can be socially detrimental in certain situations kind of following along that line you can be uniquely yourself but then there are also things that you can change about yourself it doesn't mean that you are changing what makes you you but you are changing some of the undesirable qualities that can be fixed i'm just like that's that's part of self-actualization that's part of being a better person is learning how to change certain aspects of yourself that are antisocial in nature. This person says, my mom was just pointing out that the accessible stalls aren't really accessible since the toilet paper is almost always digging into larger people's legs. Yes, this is something that really bothers me too. Also sometimes, sorry, my car is making like a really weird vibrating noise if you hear that. I'm not driving, I'm in a parking lot in the passenger side, but my car's humming. Anyway. Another thing about this that I hate is often the toilet paper holder will be either way too low or sometimes too high. Most often, though, it's way too low. And for those of us who are disabled, we have to, like, crouch and reach under to grab toilet paper. And it's really difficult to get it out. And it's just not actually accessible. And I wish there was a better standard about where the toilet paper sits. Yeah. But it's, it, the, the thing is, is that they're talking about this in, in accessibility due to fatness. But there are other accessi like um, disabilities where that might actually be more accessible for those people. The disabilities are kind of a wide, wide range. And I think to say based on where the toilet paper holder kind of sits makes it inaccessible. It makes it inaccessible to like fat people or perhaps you, but there's a range of disabilities where... Maybe having it a little bit lower is easier for them. Maybe having it a little bit higher is easier for them. Low, shortening the distance between the toilet and the toilet paper holder is for those that can't reach very far. Like, it's, I understand that it's digging into your leg, but most people aren't, like, morbidly obese. A lot of the disabled people are a bit thinner and need things a little bit closer because they can't, like, they can't lift or extend their arms that far. Like, there's there's explanations for this accessibility is a range and i think the goal is just to try to make it as accessible as they can to the majority of people you can still get the toilet paper out therefore it still functions in a way that it needs to it's about trying to cater to the most amount of people that it can and they where they place it is with that in mind i think so i don't think i think you're coming at this from a very personal perspective without taking into consideration that accessibility is a range. Disability is a range. And there are people that may need it in those positions. All right, folks, uh, someone requested that I make a video and um, I definitely want to do that. So um, I talk a lot about intentional weight loss and how I do not welcome conversations about intentional weight loss here and how there are never acceptable reasons for intentional weight loss. But there is one caveat I'd like to talk about. There's never exceptional reasons for intentional weight loss. Fuck you. Fuck you. I don't give a shit what you find acceptable. That is just a fucking way to put yourself as the arbiter of what is morally right and what is acceptable. What I choose to do is none of your goddamn business. What if I choose to lose weight? That's my own damn business. Just how if you chose to continue that you want to get as fat as possible, ultimately that is your business. Yeah. And I probably wouldn't comment it, comment on it a huge amount, except you would then argue about accessibility issues because you're so fat. And then you would say that people saying they feel fat is somehow oppression against you. You chose to ch gain that weight. Th that's the thing with FAs is that it's not as they exist that's so frustrating. It's the demands they place on other people. It is the the demands that they place on other people to cater to them because they have gotten to the way that they have. Now, here in the States, if you have a doctor that's refusing to do some sort of treatment for you because they want you to lose weight first, you can just say, no, I don't want to see this doctor anymore, and you can go find another doctor. Not every country, not every person has that option. I have heard from multiple Canadians specifically that they are not allowed to choose their doctors, that they are allowed to get, you know, second and third opinions. But it is often very hard um, to get differing opinions from the first doctor. 
and you can't just go to a different doctor or uh, go even come to the States. It, it, there's a lot of barriers in the way. So a lot of folks are being forced to lose weight in order to get things like top surgery, which is absolutely absurd. Um, namely because, you know, removing fat sacks from your chest sure as fuck would uh, drop some weight, right? It's a complications issue, both after the fact and during surgery. The doctor isn't gatekeeping it simply to shame you. They are gatekeeping it because of the added complications from being at a higher weight, especially with fat people like Fat Sapphic Bro, who are over 400 pounds. There's additional complications to those surgeries, which is why losing weight is part of going through that process. It's not, it's not everything is about making you into a victim. Um, but also I have heard that is not the only surgery that people are denied because they are forced to lose weight first. And that is really incredibly fucked up. Now, here in the States, that's not as common in that sense, like, because we can just go see a different doctor. And if you're here in the States, I really, 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 really encourage you to push back, because I think the more that we push back against this, the more things will change. And I think that Canadians and folks in countries that do this kind of shit also should be pushing back as much as you can. Um, report doctors for discrimination. That's what this is. They wouldn't do this level of discrimination for other things like ab abnormally tall people or abnormally short people or what have you, but they really pathologize being fat and it's really fucked up. So push back as much as you can, but at the end of the day... But here's the thing, there is pathology related to abnormally short people. Those with Abnor like abnormal heights often have like a, a condition connected to it like I don't remember the I don't remember the proper term but I, I want to say it's dwarfism but I don't think that's right but uh, you guys will know what I mean like the people from um little people big world like people with those genetic conditions that causes like bowed legs and stuff and they are just really short there's a condition connected with it as well as people that can there there was a man that was like 8 feet tall and he had uh, I want to say it was gigantism so something along that line where it was a pituitary gland issue where he just kept growing so there is pathologies related to height to abnormal heights just as there's pathology related to abnormal weights and there's more pathology related to abnormal weights because it is one more common and two it is more controllable if you are going to be forced to lose weight in order to get a life-saving surgery and you feel you need to do that for that surgery I do understand that and I do think that that's valid and I know that there are a lot of folks who want to do the like yeah temporary lose weight get the surgery you need and then go back to being fat and happy and I totally support that but I do really encourage you to push back as much as you can and to try and get this shit reported because it is discrimination and the only way it's going to change is if all of us fat folks really push for better treatment. Please let me know if there's any way I can help. Please try to avoid weight loss surgery as it is so, so dangerous. Thank you. Okay, so the caption that they've had for this whole thing is forced weight loss and intentional weight loss are very different. And the thing is, is that it is not a form of discrimination. Anything that the doctors are asking you to do is to account for something else in the, in the series of steps that need to be taken. You are only looking at it from your perspective and the one thing that they've given you, which is weight loss. You don't see the connection because it, you didn't ask any questions with the doctor. Why, why do I need... I'm curious. With these people that get prescribed weight loss, do they ever ask why? Do they ever ask, why do I need to lose weight? Because I'm sure the doctor, in order... Because doctors want, more than anything, they want com uh, patient compliance. So that way they can actually do their fucking jobs. And more often than not, they're willing to explain a bit as to why they're asking you to do what they're asking you to do. Why do I need to lose weight? Because it reduces the chance of complication during and after surgery. The doctor is covering their ass as well for any potential like wrongful death lawsuits because it could be seen as negligence on their part to perform a surgery on you when the complication risk was so high. They have to protect themselves 
as much as they need to provide care for you. So compliance with weight loss is part of that procedure. This person has literally come at my account from... Okay, so the cap the comment response says, um, The fatty blocked me. I couldn't respond. I'm not embarrassed. The fact she keeps blocking my account shows I'm right. Three different TikTok accounts that he has. He is absolutely obsessed with me. I think he has a crush. Sorry, baby, I'm taken. This person has literally... I do think that... I, I find it weird. This is the one thing I will say in a way that's kind of agreeing with Fat Sapphic Bro. I find it weird when you comment, you're blocked, and then you continue to create dummy accounts to harass someone. You've been blocked. If you want to hate watch their content and you make an additional dummy account to continue hate watching, but you don't continue to comment and stuff, I, I kind of understand that. So part of the reason why I've never commented on any of their any of the fat acceptance people account is because I don't want to be blocked because I know that they would block me. They don't want to hear my opinion. And yet I like to watch and comment on these videos because I feel like it's something that needs to be said. There is something almost hypnotic about these kind of people. It's almost like a sideshow sometimes with the rhetoric and bullshit that they spew. And it's kind of like a train wreck and you can't look away. And so you keep wanting to watch. Like, I get that. I get that. Uh, I do think that it's weird, though, that, like, you put comments like this out and you continue to make at least three accounts to keep commenting. It's weird. Just either watch in silence or stop watching at that point. Don't harass people. I answered this question in a video yesterday, but I totally fucked up and answered it wrong. So the question is, could you do a video on what to look for? And this is in regards to diabetes. So you know we're watching this. Because I'm chronically ill and get a lot of different labs all of the time. And I'm also dyslexic, so I missed up, I mixed up the labs. Okay, so this person is asking, could you do a video on things to look for? And this is in response to me saying that diabetes is relatively easy to catch if you know what you're looking for. So let me go over what you need to be looking for. If you suspect that you have diabetes or prediabetes or you're worried about getting it, you want to ask your doctor for a glucose test and a hemoglobin A1C. If you are also concerned about cardiac health and cholesterol, you can ask for a lipid panel and that will give cholesterol and triglycerides. Now, regardless of what some people like to say, diabetes has nothing to do with weight and is most- That's wrong and I would like to say that that's not- Saying that diabetes is relatively easy to catch and then suggesting tests to ask your doctor for doesn't give like- you, I mean, you can go into your doctor and ask for a diabetes test, but the doctor's going to ask why you think you have it, and there are signs related to diabetes. This kind of goes, remember with the whole, like, I never said I was a doctor? No, but you're giving a lot of advice here. Actually, a very, very, very genetic condition, so... Actually, it was shown that at a minimum, at least from the studies that we watched, with, we look, took a look at with the Fat Doctor UK, um, one of those studies showed that up to at least 30% could be from lifestyle choices as to what contributes to your ability to get diabetes. Like, there is a genetic component, but it's not entirely genetic. If you don't know whether or not you should be looking out for diabetes, um, it's very genetic, so... If your biological parents, grandparents, siblings, or aunts and uncles have diabetes or prediabetes, that means that you have a genetic predisposition for diabetes. So you should be getting regular lab work every three to six months. You should be getting a glucose test and a hemoglobin A1C test to find out whether or not you are in the pre-diabetic or diabetic range. If you are in the pre-diabetic range, there are a lot of things that you can start doing lifestyle change-wise to help prevent you from getting into the diabetic stage. If you are already a diabetic, 
there are still a lot of lifestyle changes you can make to pull yourself out of diabetes. I have videos about this. Let me know if you need the links and I will put them in the comments. Um, I apologize for the misinformation yesterday. I deleted that video because I don't want to be giving uh, misinformation if you have. That's a fucking laugh. And since uh, they're not actually talking about potential signs, uh, one, I will say I'm not a doctor. Two, I do, like, 70% of my family has diabetes, so the, the warning signs has, have been kind of drilled into me since I was a kid. Blurred vision, tingling hands and feet, dark circles around wrists, uh, brown joints in general, and the neck, and then frequent uh, thirst and urination. So we're there, um, and in fact, just for validity sake, this is from the CDC Diabetes Symptoms, because I, I didn't think their video, Fat Sapphic Pro's video was helpful at all. But here are some things that would warrant you asking for a blood sugar test. Peeing a lot, often at night, you're very thirsty, losing weight without trying, you're very hungry, you have blurry vision, numbness or tingling in hands or feet. You're very tired, very dry skin, sores that heal slowly, and you have more infections than usual. So it's interesting. They don't know the, the darkness. I was always told darkness around, um, like, joints, the wrists, fingers, and then around the neck. But perhaps I'm wrong there. This is why we look stuff up, my friends. This is why. But here's your symptom chart to look at if you are experiencing... These, you might want to ask for a blood sugar test. This person says, I followed you because you are awesome and hilarious. The schooling is just a big plus. What are symptoms I should look out for? With some heart smiley face emojis. Thank you. I am glad that I can be helpful for folks. Um, so if you, this is in um, relation to diabetes. So if you want to know what symptoms of diabetes to look out for. Um, increased thirst, increased hunger, even if you're eating normally, uh, increased uh, urination, extreme fatigue, blurry vision. If you get any pins and needles in your hands, arms, feet, or legs, including if you get numbness or tingling, if you notice that your cuts and bruises are healing more slowly, or if you're dealing with weight loss, even though you're eating more food. Those are all kind of the most common basic symptoms of... Well, at least they were pretty accurate. The CDC says hands and feet, not arms and legs. But overall, Fat Sapphic Pro actually listed them correctly. Type 2 and even type 1 diabetes, the, uh, the symptoms are very, very similar. Um, also things to look out for, hypoglycemia. So if your blood sugar drops too low, you can start feeling very fatigued, very sort of brain foggy, um, and very just not well until you eat something. And that can mean that you deal with hypoglycemia, which is also a related related to diabetes issue, but it can be its own thing as well. So that's something to also uh, look out for um, and make note of if you're at all concerned about the potential of having uh, diabetes or prediabetes. I think that covers most of it. If you have any more questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you. For once, they, they actually didn't do a bad job with that. I, I will give them that. They didn't do a bad job there. This person is genuinely asking how I feel about Roxanne Gay's weight loss surgery. Um, I don't know anything about it. I didn't even know she had weight loss surgery. Um, you, There's literally no amount of money anyone could ever give me that would make me agree to have weight loss surgery. There's no amount of bullying from a doctor that would make me have weight loss surgery. Again, with doctors bullying them, and it's like, dude, you're 400 pounds. They're not bullying you. They're saying you have significant risk. They're trying to prevent issues. They are trying to help you. There's no amount of, of 
um, manipulation and control from medical professionals, that would make me do weight loss surgery. Literally. You could offer me $10 million tomorrow to have weight loss surgery, and I would tell you to fuck off. Weight loss surgery is awful. The side effects are awful. Almost everyone eventually has massive complications. A lot of them die. Okay, I would like citation with the almost everyone comment. I mean, that's a pretty grand statement to make without something to back it the fuck up. And with complications, there there's a variety, there's different types of complications. There's mild complications, like, well, or side effects, I guess, is what I'm thinking of. But where uh, some people might, like, struggle to keep food down, they throw it up, which can be, like, rectified with maybe behavior changes, or I'm not entirely sure what that whole thing looks like. But there's a variety of different types of complications, ranging from mild to severe. So saying that almost everyone experience, experiences complications is a little bit misleading. And I feel like the statement should be qualified and then backed up with something. Whether it be medical article from a hospital or a peer-reviewed study or something from the CDC or something. Something about complications and dangers related to weight loss surgery rather than you just kind of spewing this shit. Most of them require more than one surgery. I will never ever support anyone's weight loss surgery. Now, I understand that some people will agree to do weight loss surgery because they're being bullied by their doctors and they're being refused medical treatment until they have this surgery. I personally would still not agree to weight loss surgery under literally any fucking condition, not a single one. When I say that I am anti-weight loss surgery, I am not kidding. It is horrible. And I think it is absolutely medical abuse and medical neglect that fat people are being forced to agree to and consent to these surgeries because coerced agreement is not consent. Requiring a person to have a weight loss surgery before you will treat them like a fucking human being is not consent. Oh my god, this, with this and then Marissa's concept of consent, this, look, the doctor can't provide other treatments because due to complication risk and danger and like mortality risk if you are like morbidly obese. So it's not coercive. It's this is like they as a doctor are not necessarily comfortable performing other procedures on you until this weight until you have lost this weight. It is a risk and benefit analysis that the doctors are doing in real time basically. This whole consent shit pisses me off because it's a bastardization of what consent is. It's a bastardization of the message that we try to send about consent. And it's, I don't like it. We are not working on an informed consent model as a medical industry, and that is super fucked up. So how do I feel about her weight loss surgery? I feel shitty about it. I feel bad for her. I feel sad that she felt that she had to surgically alter her body in a way that is so unnatural all because she wants to it's not natural to be 400 pounds either though i mean let's be honest you have to eat significant amounts of food the body is not meant to be 400 pounds either like if we want to talk about the natural state of the body you're not the you're not a good example of the natural state of the body either to lose weight or maybe feels pressure from doctors to lose weight i honestly don't know anything about this. I haven't read about it. I, I don't know why she got the surgery, um, but it, it's incredibly heartbreaking. I genuinely feel heartbroken because there's a good chance that she will deal with lifelong complications and there's a good chance she might die from this. Weight loss surgery is medical fat phobia. It is medical abuse. It is medical neglect and it is literally killing us. 
So now we have the uh, a bit more context. I remember when I covered Fat Sapphic Bro a while back that they said that doctors are killing fat people, and I didn't have context for that at the time. Now I have some context, and I understand that quote a little bit better. Uh, I still disagree with it. I don't think it's medical abuse. I don't. I think that your over veneration of your mor your morbid obesity is far more dangerous than the weight loss surgery. But that's my perspective. Um, ultimately, we have run out of time. There's so much to talk about with Fat Sapphic Bro. Uh, I started on November 1st of 2021. We only made it to November 5th. There is so much to go through with this person. And you can really, I can really get in the zone with it because I don't like this person. I don't like Fat Sapphic Bro because I think that they are a cry bully baby, quite frankly, that is just obsessed with being the victim, but also being morally superior to others at the same time. Where Marissa just wants, Marissa's, I get the feeling that she is very much a child and still wants to be treated like a child almost, where there's this constant comforting and this, oh, you're doing so well, and like this constant praise, like she just, it's a very childlike view that I get from Marissa, where Fat Sapphic Bro, I get much more of a manipulative feeling from them. And that's what pisses me off about them. We have quite a bit to go through. Um, I'm going to stop it here for today. Um, I think I already talked about Binks, so there isn't much left to say. I'm going to do one more check to see if we have anything positive from you guys. So there's nothing new than what I covered on my last video. So we're going to just kind of end it here. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.